Hey everyone, in my recent job search I have been interviewed at many companies. In this video we will be solving a question that was asked in different interviews. So some of the interviewers asked me to create a memorization function in JavaScript. So they mentioned that this particular memorization function should be used for caching some expensive calculations. So yeah, let's start coding this particular interview question. So before starting, I wanted to explain one very important concept called closures. So we will be using this particular closures concept for creating our memorization function. So here I have created this particular function and I am assigning that function in closures explanation. So while assigning subscribe to rowdy coders within closures explanation, what happens is whatever this subscribe to rowdy coders written that will be assigned to our closures explanation, right? And when I call this closures explanation, then this particular function will be executed, right? So now I just will copy this code and I'll show this particular explanation in a better way in this particular inspect. Okay, so yeah. Here I'll be having debugging point here and I'll be running my code. So here if you observe what happens is here this closer explanation will have all of the function and when I run this closers explanation then this particular console statement will be printed. If you see the details is not available within this function but still here it is the details are available within this particular console statement because this creates a closure actually because of which it will have reference to this particular object and if you observe here a closure is created and this particular details object is available within closure so with this if you understand closures means a function along with its lexical scope is called a closure which means a function along with its higher memory scope is called a closure okay so I'll, I'll run it and show the output here the output would be subscribed because it is having this particular function is having access to its higher scope okay and we will be using the same concept for creating our memorization function so let's go ahead and start this let me create memorization function okay and let's say I'll be doing a calculation where I'll have a number okay and I need to find the square of the number and here I need to memorize this particular square function okay in this case this is a small calculation only but there can be heavy calculations within the square function if we run a square for 4 let's say we shouldn't call the square for 4 again in the same execution let's say so to avoid that we'll kind of have this memorization function okay so let me call this particular memorization function with our square okay and this particular memorization function i'll be storing in a closer mem okay I'll be storing in this closure mem and I'll call this particular closure mem with four let's say. So here what I'll do is I'll kind of return a function okay and I'll have a cache object okay. So here when I assign this memorization function to the closures mem then whatever this memorization returns will be stored in this closures mem and then when I call this closure mem with 4 then this particular argument let's say this particular 4 will be placed in this argument right here this particular cache will be accessed within this particular function as per closure right so now what I will do is while calling this I will calculate the square and I will place it within the cache with a unique key okay and if I call this particular square again, I will check that particular unique key. If the value exists in the unique key, then I will directly return from the cache. If it is, if it won't exist, in that case I will call the square again and I will put it in cache and I will return. 
right this is how we can actually create our memorization function so for putting our calculation in a cache i'll kind of create a unique key okay i'll create s and dot stringify of our argument it's nothing but let's say a okay i'll create a unique key and i'll kind of call my square method with this particular you know um parameter and i'll place it in let's say i'll place it in some variable okay and i'll kind of assign that particular value right in my cache value in my cache and at the end i'll kind of return that cache cache of that key this is for the first time when i call square this this is the way it executes but when i call this method again right in that case what would happen is so when i call this particular close mem again what would happen is it will come to this particular return and it will have this for and it will create this key and if you see this particular cache will contain the calculation right in that case i need i shouldn't call this data i shouldn't call this particular calculation in that case right if my cache dot key exist in that case i'll kind of return the data okay instead of calling this particular function so this is this is how we can actually cache a logic right so let me execute it and show let me console here to see whether it's a caching or not cache or result okay let me execute it and show so yeah let me also console this particular closes mem okay to see our calculation okay let me execute it so if you see first one is 16 that came from our square method okay and the second one is a cached result which is directly came let me to have a better understanding let me have a console here as well it's calculated result okay let me execute it if you see first one is the calculated result and the second one is our cache result so here we are kind of caching our result right so we need to have modularity for this code because let's say this is square and it works but if there are many arguments in that case how do we handle means so here how do we handle means here memorization is having a method function that i'll be placing here okay and this particular function i'll be calling instead of the square okay and here what the square is being passed so the function will be available here right so this is one thing and also here i have this particular a as parameter right to this function but let's say if there are multiple arguments then how do we handle this in that case what we can do is we can kind of spread these as args and whatever the content that i pass it will be let's say stored in args in that case i'll have these args here okay and the function will be called with these args okay and yeah let's you know execute this as well so here we have added some more modularity right let me also create one more function to check out modularity where i kind of calculate cube okay so yeah and now this is the calculated result and let's say i'll kind of copy these two elements two items and let me paste it 
and let me call the cube here cube here let me create one more for our cube catch mem cube okay and let me paste it here right and let me execute it okay if you see okay let me give this particular cube as well here if you see if i execute in that case if you see this is calculated and cached result and this is calculated and cached result and it is working as expected and this is one of the most asked interview questions and if you like the content please do subscribe to my channel